Let's get started with task number one. So task number one is called the bleeding edge. And basically the setup here, the scenario is I, I'm, I still have my attacker machine. And then in the target machine, what's going to happen is we're going to, I'm going to have a Docker, a Docker container running and this Docker container has Nginx in it. And this container is running a version of OpenSSL, which is vulnerable to the, uh, the hard bleed attack or the hard bleed uh, vulnerability, right? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the attack machine to try to explore this vulnerability. To explore this vulnerability, we're going to be using a framework, which is called Metasploit. So we're going to be using Metasploit for, for that. And let me just go to the Kali Linux machine and I'll show you how we can use uh, Metasploit. So Metasploit is a framework that is written in, in Ruby and you don't have to know Ruby. You don't have to write Ruby code in order to interact with the, with the framework. And so to do that, what we're going to be doing is to use a command line called MSF console. And what MSF console is going gonna, is gonna to do for us is going to it's gonna bring a little console so we can interact with uh, with the framework. In the past, they used to have the the CLI, but they deprecated the CLI and they they, they tell you to use the the console now. Uh, I know some people would like to use this in their CI/CD pipeline, and it is totally possible. You just need to add a dash x option and then you know write everything that would write in the console. So then this way you can kind of like script things if you want to run this as your in your in your pipeline. So when I when I run this, it's just gonna bring up the console. It, sometimes it takes a little bit because it's just you know loading a lot of things, but that's that's the best way for us to uh, to start doing you know doing exploitation etc. and interact with the with the console here. And whenever you run Metasploit, you're gonna see a, a banner. This time I got this banner, but every time you run, you get a, a different banner, which, which I find cool. Uh, and then basically Metasploit, you've got different modules. Yeah, so. There is uh, exploitation modules, there is auxiliary modules, which means like scanners, fuzzers, uh, sniffers, etc. There is post exploitation modules and a, and a few others. And what we're going to be using here for the challenge is a scanner module for the hard bleed vulnerability. If you want to, to look for, for a module, so there is a little command called search, and then you just type in the name of the module. If you don't know the name of the module, let's say the module, you know that the module is a type exploit. So you can type in exploit and then it's gonna, first it's gonna build a cache and then it's gonna um, search for all the modules which are of type exploit. And you see, we're gonna get a lot of modules back. But in, in my case, since I'm, I'm only interested in the hard bleed one, what I could do is, is just to do search hard bleed. And then it would just search through all of the modules and return to me those related to Hardly. And yeah, so as you can see here, there are tons of modules. So there is, you know, here you can see post, right? So this is for post exploitation for, for Windows and we've got uh, Linux, uh, hardware, Fire, Firefox, etc. Yeah, okay, so in our case, like I said, I, I wanted to search for, for Hardly. And let's see what's uh, what's gonna bring it back. And this is actually cool because you you this is kind of a well, it's not a shell. You you could run some some very uh, you know very um, simple commands like ping, the sort of things, echo, etc. Uh, it's not a full shell, but there is even like for example, if you want to grab things, so if you got like you you search for all of these things, but you just want to grab for whatever you actually want, there is a grab command. So you you, you wouldn't use pipe grab, you'd use the grab command, and then you can grab for let's say uh, Linux, and then you, you do the command, which is search for exploit. So then in this case, it's gonna search for all the exploit modules, bring everything back, but then it's just gonna show you uh, the Linux, Linux related ones. Okay, so this is the, uh, these are the hard bleed modules that I have, and we've got two here. So they're both uh, auxiliary modules. The one that I'm interested in is the first one, which is the, the information leak. Now, if you want to use a module, what you need to do is you need to, well, use the module. So there is a command called use, and then basically just copy the name of the modules, which is this one here, and then you paste. And then as soon as you, you do that, you're gonna see that the, the console is a little bit different. So we're, we're kind of like inside this module, right? And before we can, we can you know, launch an attack or, or do an exploitation, you, so if I do show options, we first need to set a few things. So like here, let me maybe bring it like this and then you can see better. So there, there are a couple of things that we're gonna have to set up. So for example, we need to tell Metasploit 
where is the host, right? So where is my target? What's the IP address of my target? And then what we also need to do is to set up the port. So as you can see here, the port is set up for 443. But if I go back to the challenge, it will show you, you will show us one second right here. It's 8443. So we're going to have to change the, uh, the port. So let's, let's do that next. So to set these environment variables, there is a, um, a command called set. And then first let's set up the port. And then I need to set up for 8443. So that's, that's the port of my, of my server. And if I do show options again, you see that it changed to 8443. Then we need to set up the hosts. So I need to set up, so set our hosts. And in my case, that's going to be 172, 21, 0, 24. So that's the IP address of my target machine. I set it up. And then if I do show options again, and we can see that the, both the host and the port are set up. So I think we're, we're ready to go here. And if you want to just run this module, you simply need to type in run. Very simple. Now, we, if you take a look at the, at the output, at the top, we can see that the heartbeat response, uh, so heartbeat response with leak, but it doesn't actually tell us anything. So we know that th there was a leak, but I, I, I just can't see the output. So if you want to go, if you want to see more, there is a verbose mode. So there is a, a variable verbose. So you just set it up to, um, to be true, and then it can run again. Before I run it, I just wanted to mention that, you know, here I'm setting up these variables specifically for for this module, but if there is a target that you're going to be running multiple modules, you can set up, uh, let's say, global variables, right? So then that means you don't have to set up the variables every time you're running a, a different module. But because I'm just interested in the, in the hard lead module, that's uh, I'm, I'm only setting up once. Now, if I run it again, we got a completely different output. Let me scroll all the way up. Bunch of things here. Uh, there you go. So here you can see information like, you know, uh, sending client, hello. This is just, you know, the TLS handshake. And if I scroll down a little bit, that's where we're interested in. So we've got heartbeat response, uh, so 65,000 bytes, and then heartbeat response with leak, which is what we saw before. And then here we can see what, what was leaked, right? So this is the, the information that came. And you might not, you might not be understanding exactly uh, what this is. So I think it's it's worth for me to explain a little bit what is the uh, what is the heartbleed vulnerability. So imagine that you're you're on Gmail, right? So you're on a Gmail account, and you're not you're not actually doing anything. So Gmail is just it's just there. There is a TLS connection between your your client, your browser, and the Gmail server. And and what happened is that they need they need to know that the the, the connection is still up and running. So one of the servers, let's say your client, your browser, is going to send a heartbeat to, uh, to the server, to Gmail server. And this heartbeat is, is like a payload, right? Uh, the, the maximum size of this payload is 64 kilobytes. And that's why you can see here 65,000 bytes. So 64 kilobytes is the, uh, the maximum. And then what the client is going to do is that they're going to send the payload to the server, but they're actually, they're also going to send how, what's the size of this payload? Right? So if, if, if the client sends a payload, which is 20 kilobytes, then it's going to tell the server here, this is this payload here, the size of it is 20 kilobytes. Now, the server is going to get this information, the heartbeat, and what it's going to do is it's going to allocate a, a memory buffer. So a, a region in the memory where it stores information It's going to take the payload and put in the memory. And then it's going to take a look at the value that the client sent and it's going to allocate that much. So if the client sent 20, 20 kilobytes, it's going to allocate 20 kilobytes and put the payload there. So, I mean, it doesn't seem anything wrong with that, but the problem is that in the implementation of OpenSSL, they were not checking the actual size of the payload. So if the, if the client sends, let's say a 20, 20 kilobyte um, payload, but then the client says, this is 64, even though it's not, but it says it, this is 64, what the server is going to do is kind of allocate 64 kilobytes, put the payload there, and then the response is just going to read from the memory and, and, and return it to, to the client. But the problem is that, you know, 20, 20 kilobyte is the, is the payload that came from the client. But what about the rest? Right? So what about the, um, I think it's, it's going to be like 44 kilobytes, right? So what about the rest? The rest is probably something that's already on the memory. 
So that's why it says here that, that we received a heartbeat response with the leak because we sent a 64 kilobyte um, number for, for the, the server telling that this is the size of my payload. But the payload here was probably much smaller than this. And then the server just read everything. Yeah, so, I mean, this was back in 2014. I think they they found this in April 2014. By now, I'm hoping that, you know, a lot of servers, they're, they're already, they already fixed it. So you just need to upload, uh, update the, the version of OpenSSL. But this is, that was just an exercise for us to, to learn how to use uh, Metasploit and how to, you know, how to use modules and run, um, run the exploitation with it, right? Okay, so this we're not gonna we're not gonna do anything with this. It was just for us to uh, to understand how how this works. And here it even says that one host out of one was canned and was 100% complete. And before I move on, I'm just gonna ex explain how how it actually works with this with this dojo. So for each one of the tasks, uh, the let's say definition of done, we're, we're gonna have to find an answer. And in this answer, we need to extract a character. We're gonna do this for the five tasks. And then at the end, there's going to be, uh, we call it a master secret. So the master secret is going to be five letters, right? So this task one, I need to find the, the master character, the first letter. And for us to do this, what we need to do is we need to get the full name of the module, which includes the auxiliary, right? So the full name of the module is auxiliary slash scanner slash and then all the rest. And then what we're going to be doing is to encode it using uh, base64. So we're going to use base64 to encode it. And then the ma master character is going to be the 16th character of the resulting base64 encoding string. Okay, so now what I need to do, I'm just going to exit um, Metexploit here. I could run inside, but I'm just going to add it, exit a little bit better. So I'm just going to echo the name of the of this one here, of this um this module. I'm going to put dash n because I don't want to include a new line. The name of the module is going to be auxiliary slash scanner, etc. And then I'm going to pipe this to base64. There we go. So that's that's our string. And the 16th character, if you want to make your life easier, you can do cut dash c 1 dash 16, which, is going to, which means that it's going to return the first 16 characters. And there we go. So J, so that's the the sixteenth character that we're looking for. So that's the first letter of the um, of the no, task number one. 